Welcome back to Mind Pump TV. I'm Adam Schaefer. I'm your host. I'm here with Bedros Kulion. We Adam. just we just did an incredible podcast with you, and I wanted to dive in a little bit deeper on one of the questions that we talked about. Now, in your experience, you've probably had what hundreds, thousands of coaches and trainers that you've uh, forty three, just over forty three thousand clients and customers. Wow. Yeah. And so, what I wanted to address, I wanted to make a quick video just about some of the biggest mistakes that you see fitness entrepreneurs make. Sure. Well, one of the biggest mistakes I see fitness entrepreneurs make is they don't pick out a niche. So they go, hey, I train people eight to 80, male or female, bodybuilding, weight loss, group training, one-on-one. -on -one. And the moment you decide to pick a niche and become an expert at it, like be known in a space, so we do one thing, do better than anybody else, your business will grow. The second thing is marketing. They put way too little emphasis on marketing, actual lead generation, getting that lead to become a very qualified prospect, converting them into a paying client, sales, right? And then retention and referrals. Um, those things have to happen. So they forget about the marketing side of the business. They go, well, if I just create a, a brand, people will come. So they create a fancy logo, a website. You have to lead generate. And then of course, you know, finally is deliver the results. I see way too many personal trainers, fitness experts saying, my client's not getting results, even though I'm a great trainer, because they're not on top of their diet. They're not on top of their workouts that they're supposed to do on their own. Well, the fact is you're supposed to be a good coach and a good coach knows how to take that client and make them compliant where the diet and the nutrition and the lifestyle and the habits are concerned. So become a good coach and actually get them to see results. Now you've been in the game for 20 years now. Yeah. How has the, the marketing changed for people? Oh, marketing's changed big time, right? Like in my time, we were doing lead boxes at pizzerias and stuff. And then I would set up body fat testing tables where I would use a skin caliper to test you in front of a grocery store. And that was my lead in. So I would buy a, a, a pound of fat, pound of muscle from uh, those anatomy stores. Do you remember those? Yeah, yeah I remember way. those. I use that for sales all yeah. the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'd have a pound of fat, a pound of muscle, and then I would have the Ling calipers. And then I would just like, as people walking in and out of the grocery store, hey, would you like to know what your body fat percentage is? Do you want to know how much of this fat you have and how much muscle you have? Uh, yeah, because they're curious. They want to touch the fat, right? And so I draw them in and I do a body fat test with the lane calipers and you're pinching people in three to six right. areas. Um, and of course, then I'd get the phone number, and et cetera, and then ask them to come and work out. These days, now we're using social media, we're using email marketing, we're building actual celebrity out of ourselves and our communities by using YouTube and Instagram. So marketing has changed big time. Unfortunately, only, I think less than 3% of our industry is using it effectively. Wow, yeah. you think that low, really? That low. When, did, when was the transition for you when you realized that? When did, you, when did you see no more lead boxes, now we're moving into this Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, when did you see that? Uh, the first sign of that was in 2010 when I was started running my first Facebook ads and I was getting email addresses for eight cents per email address, opt-ins, like qualified opt-ins, right? Wow. I'm like, holy cow. Which is a steal, right, back then? A steal of a deal. Today we're paying four to eight dollars an email address, right? Which is still, you know, we say it's a steal because we're selling $25,000 franchises. But, you know, when you're talking about 10 cents an email address, like, you're rocking and rolling. So I go, there's something up with this Facebook where, and now of course, Facebook can slice and dice by gender, by demographic, by financial status, where they live, how far they are from your gym. So you could really hone in and laser focus. So we went from like shotgun marketing to laser-like marketing and really marketing with a with dynamite because I can go, all right, show me all the women within three miles who are married and own a house and make income of 100,000 or more. So around 2010, 2011 is when I realized this Facebook thing, there's something to it. And very quickly, we saw that people are going to websites. We can actually get their email address, indoctrinate them through email marketing. So that was a big technology change for us in our space. And then now with you know 2013, 2014, Instagram coming online, holy smokes, you've got your own TV network right. where you can broadcast and become a celebrity, a personality, an expert, and an authority to the exact demographic that you're looking for, whether it's personal trainers who are male or Pilates instructors who are female or people who want to lose weight, but they're business executives. Like you can target the right audience. There's never been a time that that can happen. And today's it. You know, I've heard a lot of people say this. I'm curious to what you think that, you know, for example, we're on YouTube right now. We just got done with a podcast. You know, then you got Instagram, you got yep. Twitter, you got Facebook. Do you think that it's important uh, for someone who's trying to grow their fitness business that you have the same voice across the board, or do you think you should have a different voice depending on what platform that you're on? Good question. I'm a big fan of having the same voice, and I've proven it over and over again with my coaching clients as well. I go, hey, just be you, bring your authentic and transparent self to any of the platforms you want. Like uh, one of my good friends and clients, Elliot Hulse, he went all in on YouTube for a very long right. time, right? 
So you can go all in on YouTube for a long time. Now he's on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram, but it's still the same Yo Elliot that you know, love, and trust. And so bring the same voice across all platforms, no matter what, because if people see this incongruency in you from one platform to the next, that's enough to trigger fear and to get them to want to disconnect. Now, I see a lot of people that try and, you know, they see these influencers or people yeah. that have millions of YouTube subscribers or Instagram, and they're trying to emulate what these other people are doing. What, what would you say is one of the most common mistakes that someone that's trying to grow their business makes when they're getting involved into the social media? Well, I mean, you can't out Gary Vaynerchuk, Gary Vaynerchuk. You can't out, <laughs> out Andy Frisella or Lewis House or Adam, these people, right? So you can only be the best version of yourself. Mm -hmm. So rather than trying to be like them, because they're always gonna be more like themselves than you can ever be, how about you just be your best self? And when you do, you're soon gonna find your voice. Like you said, I was asking you guys like, gee, fellas, I want to start my own podcast and I'm learning so much watching you guys, how comfortable you guys were, how you guys wait and you guys listen instead of waiting to talk and, and how the energy was just so good in there. Well, it's easy enough for me to watch and learn from you guys, but you went on and tell me, you said, hey, we used to have to have our guests come the day before, take them out to dinner, break the ice, get them to know us and us to know them but you've gotten good at it. Over time, you found your voice and your rhythm. Right. So the problem I see with our industry is they don't spend enough time trying to find their authentic voice and their transparency. They're spending more time trying to be like someone else, right. which sucks. Would you recommend that somebody that is getting into all the social media to spread themselves over all platforms and grow them together? Or would you think it's a smarter strategy to go after one platform and really drill it down and then move on to the next? I'd say go after one strategy, drill it down, and move on to the next. So we talked about how Elliot Hulse dominated YouTube and then went to Facebook and now is also on Instagram and he's doing all three. It's like the plate spinner at the circus. Yeah. They're not going to try and have four or five plates starting at the same time. They start with one pole, one plate, get it going. Okay, it's going. Start the second one and maintain two and then three and then four. And it's easier to do that. And so I started the opposite of Elliot. I started with Facebook, went to YouTube, and then Instagram. Yeah. But I can maintain all three now. And so if you go narrow and deep, you go all in on one thing, you're just not in battle, in war. If you try and find, fight a battle or a war on three fronts, you're more likely to lose than if you just fight that battle on one front, you're likely to win. Same thing applies in business. Now, something we didn't dive into a lot on the podcast that I actually wanted to ask you um, and you slightly mentioned it a couple times when we were talking was uh, email list. Yeah. Um, how important do you think it is to have an email list? It's still super important today because everyone's like, hey, I've got 30,000 or 500,000 followers on Instagram. Hey, good for you. But no, you don't. Instagram has 500,000 followers under your name right. on Instagram. Facebook has half a million followers under my name on Facebook. I realize they're my fans, but the moment Facebook decides to shut my account down, change the algorithm, change the algorithm. So our job is to build the followers and then extract them onto an email list. Mm -hmm. Now they're mine because they're sitting on my eye contact or MailChimp or Infusionsoft account. And I've gone one further. I download them onto an actual hard drive where I have it on a desk, mm -hmm. right? Because I don't know if MailChimp is going to shut down one day and I have to move those email addresses. So email email marketing is massive. It's the only way to get people to stop paying attention to the masses and get them to pay attention only to you through their email marketing. Now, you do that by autoresponders, by story selling, storytelling and story selling. Um, but if you don't get them on your email list with a great opt-in, you're screwed. But until you get them on an email list, they're not your followers on social media. They just belong to that platform. Right. How much has that business evolved? Because I remember when I first used to get emails and you know 10 12 years ago plus you know we could just you just market you market everybody opened their emails because you felt cool with your now it's gotten sure. to where everybody is emailing you so much a lot of it becomes white noise how have you had to evolve your business because you've been doing this for so long yeah well like anything else the market becomes more sophisticated right so facebook ads used to cost like i said 10 cents i'd get an email address and it it wasn't even, hey, do you want to show people on mobile and the side and the news feed and this platform? It was just one type of Facebook ad to run when I was running my own Facebook ads. Now I've got professionals running campaigns for us for hundreds of thousands of dollars per month on our, on our ad spend because Facebook has become so sophisticated. Same with Instagram, YouTube, Google pay-per-click or SEO, uh, email marketing as well. And so when the stuff becomes sophisticated, you either have to go to experts or you have to figure it out yourself. For me, we figured out that we now use list hygiene really extensively. What I mean by that, 
If within three months you haven't opened a single email from me, we just purge you. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, we purge you. So my list will shrink and then get bigger again with more opt-ins. And is that because buyers are buyers and then you don't want a lot of this kind of dead weight in there? Is That's that the it, because here's what happens now. Uh, the algorithm on Gmail, Hotmail, AOL, this is a really good lesson for you guys. Um, Hotmail, Gmail, Yahoo, and AOL has changed where if I'm sending out 30,000 email addresses a day, emails a day to 30,000 people, only 2,000 people are opening it. If enough of those other people aren't opening it, Hotmail, Yahoo, Gmail, AOL goes, hmm, you might be a spammer or your content is irrelevant to them. We're gonna start moving your all your emails to their spam folders or junk folders. Oh shit. Yeah, so what I wanna do now is start using list hygiene and go, all right, Adam hasn't opened my email for the last 90 days. And I've tried using all these different subject lines, curiosity provoking, benefit rich, right? Uh, value adding subject lines. Dude, for 90 days, you haven't opened it up. See you later. You can opt in again, and when you do, I'm guessing when you opt in, you'll be responsive again. Wow. Yeah, you, so list hygiene is super important. Do you know the? Do you know what the threshold is for open rate then? Is it like once you're getting less than 10% open rate, you're gonna go spend, do you have any idea what that if, is? W once you're under 30%, that means you're, you're likely ending up in junk boxes. Which by the way, most people's open rates are probably 14 yeah. to 20% at best, right? At, at best, and their ego is like, I got a big list, I don't wanna get rid of all these people. You know how hard I fought to get these email addresses? Wow. Yeah, but if they're not buying, they're taking up space and they're sending a message to AOL, uh, Gmail, Hotmail, Yahoo, that this guy's a spammer. Even though you're not, they opted in at some point, but now they're disinterested. Get rid of them, have a smaller, more responsive list, and the, the four big email platforms will love you for it. God, man, you so are- you, You've seen those tabs, right? The promotional tabs and stuff you yeah, have in your inbox? Yeah. I don't wanna end up in your promotional tab. No one's checking that. I wanna end up in your main inbox. Wow. Man, you are full of gems. This is one of the reasons why we are so excited to introduce you to our audience. You've got a great book, Man Up, coming out soon. Yes, sir. Right? When does that come out? September? Is that what you said? Uh, September 18th. And Man Up is all about entrepreneurial leadership and how you can take any business that's doing six or seven figures and scale it to eight and nine figures, just like I've done myself and I've done for a lot of my coaching clients. Awesome. Listen, if you guys like this type of content, make sure you guys comment below, subscribe to the channel, like and share. Share this with any other fitness entrepreneur friends that you guys know that are trying to build their business. Bedros is a man. Thank Thank you guys.